What is going on everybody and welcome to a new video series where I'm going to be poking around with a robotic arm. So a company called a U factory hit me up just as I was actually moving. If you haven't noticed, I'm in a new location now. Um, and asked if I would like to play around with their U arm Swift Pro. So let me pull that one up real quick. So this is the U arm Swift Pro. Um, it's kind of hard for me to move it around right now. It's actually plugged in, so all the motors are kind of activated. So that's uh, why I can't really move it, but I'll show you it moving later. Um, anyways, it has um, a bunch of what they're calling end effectors. Uh, so for example, let me just grab a few here. Uh, this one is a laser engraver. You can use it to engrave wood and paper, a cardboard. Um, maybe even give yourself a tattoo. I wouldn't suggest it, um, but maybe. <laughs> then we've got uh, just your a, a little gripper claw type thing. We have an open MV camera, so you can attach it for like an onboard camera. And then we have a what looks to be a cigar trimmer. Uh, <laughs> it's actually just like a pen holder. Um, Anyway, all of these little end effectors kind of work similarly, and if you see that part that's sticking out right about there, basically it screws on on the bottom of the arm. You can see this little uh, silver screw. You just unscrew that, pull this out, slide the new thing in, screw it back in. It takes about 30 seconds to change the end pieces, so that's pretty cool. So those are the main ones it has. It also has a 3D printer attachment, which actually is, um, I think it's $68 on their website. Um, so it's actually pretty cool that you can do all those things with the same arm itself. Now the arm costs $750. So I know right out of the gate, most people probably won't be buying a $750 piece of equipment to follow along with the tutorial. If you want to, that's fine. The link's in the description. Um, but you don't actually need to buy the arm to follow along in this series. Actually, a lot of what we're going to be doing is more like image analysis types of tasks. We'll be training a model, possibly building a model and all that kind of stuff. And most of the time, I can actually just host the data that we would need to be working with. So you won't necessarily need an arm to follow along, but I'm not going to lie, the arm is super cool. So the arm itself has basically four directional movements. As you've got up and down, forward and back, and then... Um, side to side. Now, uh, the this arm, the pro version, is like super precise. Uh, it's got a 0 0.2 millimeter repeatability. So basically, if you ask it to, to go to the same coordinates over and over and over, how, how close does it get? And it gets 0.2 millimeters of repeatability. So uh, for 3D printing or for laser engraving, that's really important that it has a high degree of repeatability. So I've actually used it to do a laser engraving project. Um, I made a, a few signs for like around the house. Um, and to do that, to get a nice deep engraving, you've got to make like 20 passes. Uh, and it did just fine. So uh, pretty impressive. Uh, for what we're going to be using it here for, we're going to mostly be using the suction cup, which is actually on there right now. So this thing's actually pretty cool too, because what it does is, um, a, this is actually a really common attachment to like robotic arms, but it's my first time actually working with one. And so it's got a suction cup, but it also has like a little vacuum that just also adds, you know, um, a vacuum. Uh, so it can, it can hold things much, much more reliably. Uh, so this one actually holds um, heavier objects than the motors will put up with. So the actual motor fails before the suction cup fails. So anyway, so what's cool about this arm and why I was really excited when they sent it to me is actually you can program it very easily with Python. Everything is open sourced. And even if they didn't have a Python API, you can actually send this pure raw string commands to the arm and you could control it that way. And you could do that with any language. You don't even need to, you could just via the terminal or something. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's check it out. Let's see how basic it really can be and how easy it is to control the arm. And then we're going to get into the actual task at hand, which I'm going to be using it to play air hockey to start. Uh, the other thing is, since it's so precise, um, I've been trying to think of ways to do a... Free I can't think of a good word for it besides farm. Uh, but basically, I've always wanted to grow plants uh, that I can't specifically grow in the environment that I'm in. 
Um, but a lot of, I like to grow food, and for food, most of the time you have to be able to pollinate it. And I'd like to have it be a closed system so you can't necessarily have bees in there or anything that's going to pollinate. So then you got to like hand pollinate it. Um, but actually an arm like this could, could do the pollination for you automatically. So that might be something I check out later too. But for now, I want the arm to play air hockey. So first, let's go ahead and go through some of the commands that you can do with the arm. So if you did get the arm or you want to follow along or whatever, they do have uh, the API that they've hosted here on GitHub. Um, and uh, you just go there, clone it, and then uh, you just would do a python setup.py install for the actual package itself. So uh, once you have that, we're just going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to import time. I'm also going to from uf wrapper, not warper, but wrapper.swift underscore api. We're going to import the swift api. And then it's going to, I knew it was going to do that to me. There. Okay. Now, um, so the arm is actually... So there's a lot of attachments that you can add to the arm. There's also sensors you can add to the arm um, via a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino, which actually came with the arm. Um, and so you have the access to all the sensors that might connect to those devices, but also the arm itself is a USB arm. So the arm itself can actually, so not only can you get sensors that extend the arm, the arm could extend anything else too. It just plugs into USB. So that's kind of how I'm going to be making use of it. So I'm actually going to, at least for air hockey to start, I'm going to have just like an overhead camera um, that, that pulls in the data that we're going to work with. But anyways, it's a USB arm, and so it has to connect via this COM port to send everything. But for some reason, I think either the API doesn't clean up after itself, or maybe I've got some other program. But regardless, a lot of times I get this error that it can't, get access to that port and it says access is denied. There's no permissions issue really. Um, it's because something is using that port and I know I can go in and inspect it or whatever, uh, but it's actually just quicker for me to write a quick uh, block of code here. Um, basically what it does is just until it gets access, it just keeps trying and sleeping for 0.2 seconds. So just a kind of a hacky way to get around it, but that's how I'm doing it. Um, and then once you've done that, you can start making API calls. So I'm just going to paste in these API calls. So since most people aren't going to be programming an ARM along with me, I'm going to do a lot more copying and pasting, especially in this series. Um, at least any time we're dealing with the ARM, when we go to the image analysis tasks, uh, we'll see how that goes. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and run this. And so it's timing out, and then finally it got through, and then we get the, the actual device info. But that's not interesting. We want to see the arm move. So to get the arm to actually move, uh, we use the set position. So interestingly enough, set position has two options. One is a absolute position. So you've got your coordinates X, Y, Z. X is forward and back. Y is left and right. And Z is like up, down. So in this case, we're just going to set an initial position. Speed, I want to say, is millimeters per second. This is another kind of hacky thing I've done here. The arm can't move at a hundred or at a million millimeters per second, um, but there's a distinct difference between the arm's movement at let's say thirty thousand, fifty thousand, five hundred thousand, and a million. I found that a million moves both the fastest and the smoothest, so I stick with a million. This causes other problems, and I'll talk about that in a minute, um, but for now, that's what I'm using. So this will move to the absolute position of X is 250, Y0, and Z50, and actually, I'm pretty confident the arm's already in that position, so I'm going to add a secondary motion, um, so I'll just copy this, come down here, paste a new one. And let's make x uh, let's make x 150. So and then let's make we can make z. No, we'll leave z there. So anyways, let's go ahead and run this one. Oh right. Okay. So uh, so one of the issues that I was going to bring up is <clears throat> so these commands are asynchronous commands. So you have a few options when you're running asynchronous commands. One is um, after every few asynchronous commands, you could say swift uh, dot flush underscore CMD. Now this will in theory wait for all the asynchronous commands to complete. Let me just run that real quick though. 
and it actually already finished. Well, did it finish? I think I hit shift enter like I was in, uh, I didn't hear the thing beep. Okay, that one actually ran. Now, for some reason, sometimes it like ignores these as if it's making the calculation of, rather than actually waiting for the command to complete an issue, a true or something like that, or an okay, it just does the math and decides when to continue along. Interestingly enough, that time it wasn't a problem, um, but I have had that be a problem, and then I just issue like a sleep. The other option you have is to, you can do a wait equals true, and that makes the command rather than being asynchronous, it makes it synchronous. But I don't believe, I think maybe this is the one that does the calculation. Let's see if this one actually works or not. I'm just curious. No, oh, that one appears to have also worked. Um, but we'll probably see later on that's not reliable enough. That, so, so if you really need it to make it to a certain position, you might wind up doing something like a time sleep too, or, or something like that. I'll, I'll continue along without doing it. I'll use the synchronous commands there just to see if we get away with it 100%. So the next thing I'm gonna say is, um, and in fact, let's do that. And then I'm gonna call, uh, so we can get this little suction cup here down here to uh, activate. So we can say swift dot uh, set underscore pump, and we'll say that's true. Now the interesting thing about the, oh, I thought I'd be able to, the interesting thing about this pump is it's actually pretty impressive. It, it, it doesn't, so it doesn't just turn the pump on, it actually waits to, it turns on the pump and it waits to return a true when, until it gets uh, the sensation that it's pulled something. And I'm not sure, like this has a slight kind of spring to it, but it, it's more than that. It's like the pump inside it or something seems to know. I, I really don't know the answer, but I do know if you don't give it anything to grab, it actually will time out. Um, and, it, and then it will only carry on, like this command here is not asynchronous, it's going to wait. And, and it will only carry on once it's actually grabbed something, which is cool, or it times out. And the timeout will not break your program. It will just simply time out. It throws an error. Um, but you could use that error uh, logically from there or whatever, which is pretty cool. I did not expect that to be a possibility. But anyways, once it grabs something, let's just issue a time.sleep for five seconds. And then uh, we'll do swift.set pump to false, for example. And let's just go ahead and run that real quick and I'll feed it like my phone or something. So the pump is actually on. And then we'll wait five seconds. Maybe, there it goes. <laughs> okay, so pretty cool. Um, now if you'll notice the, the pump actually turned on before, uh, before it finished moving back, even though we said wait equals true, even though we said flush command, it still set that pump on immediately. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, it, it, it just doesn't listen to you. But if I set the speed to, let's say, uh, 30,000, and then I'll paste speed in there, rerun it, it should make the move all the way back. Then it turns on the pump, we feed the pump, um, and it works as intended, whereas before it actually turned the pump on immediately. So interesting, if you ask me. You, you know, you, I would hope that wouldn't be the case that they're just like, it almost sounds harder than getting the information from the device, but maybe the device is the one that's reporting it that way. I don't know. But anyways, I found that to be curious. Okay. So the last thing I want to show you guys is that you can also move the arm relatively. So if we instead, uh, instead of like setting positions like this, like X250050, it will always be that position, right? It's a fixed position, it's absolute position, but we can also set a relative motion. So for example, we could move the pump like this. So why, why? So this will move, I'm um, sorry, not the pump, it'll move the entire arm um, over 100. I believe these are millimeters. I'm not 100% positive those are millimeters, but you can also use decimal points. So it's about a millimeter if I just inspect it visually. <laughs> but but anyways, uh, I'm not 100% that those are millimeters. I'm pretty sure they are though. But anyways, we can move it relatively. So this will move it just a hundred. Okay. So, um, but not to the fixed position of a hundred. But anyways, um, that I think is all I really want to talk about here. What we're going to be doing in the next tutorial is actually going over uh, the actual challenge that I want to 
do with this arm, and that is play air hockey with it. In one of their little promotional videos, they were playing air hockey on like a mobile app on their phone, so they were controlling it. And instead, what I want to do is use Python and Logic to at least first play air hockey, and then from there, train a model to play air hockey. And then hopefully, if I play the cards right, maybe U arm will send a second arm, and then we could actually have two arms competing against each other, uh, which would be super cool. And then we could go a step further and have users like submit their models and then do it kind of like tournament style, see who can come up with the best model. So anyways, we'll see how far we can take it. But I think first uh, we need to try to eat, at least just get it to play air hockey, which could be a huge challenge all on its own. So Anyways, that's what you guys have to look forward to. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. If you like this kind of material, uh, please do support the channel. This is a full-time job for me. You can go to pythonprogram.net slash support if you'd like to do that. Otherwise, I will see you all in another video.